Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an XO wall hanging. For my wall hanging, I'm going to be using Red Heart Super Saver. I have the color Soft White and the color Buff. Karen One Pound and Bernat Super Value are really great alternatives to this yarn. I like Red Heart Super Saver for my home decor projects because it's pretty durable and machine washes and dries okay. The only bad thing about it is that it's a little bit inconsistent in size. So really you have to gauge each skein that you add. So if you ran out of one of these colors and you added on another skein, I would recommend that you gauge swatch it first because I find that it varies from one skein to another. That's why you see I have two different crochet hooks here. I'm going to be using an H8 5mm hook for my soft white and I'm going to be using an I9 5.5mm for my buff. Gauge is not essential for this project but consistent yarn sizes is and that's why I'm switching hooks. So I do recommend that you gauge swatch as far as comparing it to mine for the overall size, that is not essential if the finished size isn't essential to you. I've previously worked my gauge, so I'm not going to work up one on camera, but it is five boxes wide equals four and a quarter inches, and five boxes tall equals four and one eighth inches. This is the chart that I have for this pattern. This is how the wall hanging is going to be with the X on top of the O. I handwrite all of my charts. This chart, you will find it in the blog post at ilovenots.com. Some people work off the chart alone. I prefer a written pattern, so you will see mine here, row. 23 says 1 white, 3 pink, 4 white, 3 pink, 4 white. That's how I'm going to work this pattern. I'm not going to be working it from the chart. You will find both ways available on my blog. I will insert a clip here showing how to work from the chart. I'm not actually going to write on this chart because I still need it to take photos to put up in the post. I do have a sample here that I messed up on. As you can see it has some marks and the numbers are all messed up but some people will print this chart out and they will work their chart and as they complete the rows they will just mark an, a line through. Meaning I just completed row 2, I'm working in this direction. After row three, you would mark it like this. I just completed row three. You can absolutely do that. I will provide the link where you can get this chart. But I do not work from the charts. I like to work from a written pattern. So I will not be working from this chart in this video. But I just wanted to show you how you could do it from the chart. This one is row four. Row four has one, two, three, four boxes, and they're all cream. If you were doing row eight, it would be one cream box, two orange boxes, and then one, two, three, four, five cream boxes. And in a lot of the charts, I, I do all my charts handwritten. But in a lot of the charts where they use a program, a software program of some sort, they have the same number, like row two's here and row two's here. So it could be a little bit more confusing to follow. But in my charts, I only put the numbers where the row starts. So row six is here and it goes downward. Row seven is here and it goes upward. So if you're following along with my chart, the box that has the number is the direction downwards or upwards 
that that row is going to go. The written pattern is written for the colors that I used here. I wanted to go with a Valentine's Day theme, so the X and the O are pink. The written pattern says pink. You can change it for whatever color you're using. I'm going to be doing buff for all the parts that you see white here, and I'm going to be doing soft white for all the pink portion. You will see me switching between these crochet hooks, and that is for the reason that I already mentioned, that the sizes of these yarn strands are not consistent. Before we move on to the pattern, I want to go over yarn really quickly. I am using one ball of buff and one ball of soft white, and I am just going to manipulate them to work this pattern. My yarn tails will most likely get tangled, and you will most likely see me fighting with it, but this is just the way that I work. You may want to have a skein of each color available for each time that you need to change colors within it. That way you just tie on a new thread from a ball of yarn and it's much easier to keep those untangled. Yes, they're still going to cross and entangle, but it's a lot easier to untangle. The other way that you can work with all these is by creating bobbins. And so you would just fasten off a long piece of yarn, work with that yarn until you run out, and then reattach the yarn there. I do work in this manner after I pass two tie-ons, since I can only add on from the center pull and the other side. So after I surpass that, then I will create my own sort of bobbin. I do not tie these. You can create a butterfly bobbin that will prevent the yarn from getting loose and tangling. I just don't bother. I just throw it there like that and I keep working. So that's completely up to you, but you're going to see me working the way that I always work. And that is just pulling from one skein of each color. You're also going to need a dowel to make it a wall hanging. You will need at least a 12 inch long dowel. I get mine from my local bird store, but I know that Michael's and Joann's have a section where they have all kinds of thicknesses of dowels in a bucket. You could also go to Home Depot and get them. I just go to my bird store because they have them in a variety of sizes because they're actually perches that go into the bird cage. Alright, on to the pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with a slip knot. I have the working yarn pulled over my hand here. Wrap it around my index finger two times. Then I'll hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop that's on the left up over the other loop but not off my finger. Then I pull the loop that's on the left now up over the other one and off my finger. Take my crochet hook, insert it into the loop where my finger is. Then I'm going to hold the working yarn in my right hand and the short tail end I'm going to pull it and it's going to tighten that loop up on your hook just to normal tension. We're going to be working in corner to corner boxes and our boxes are going to be made with double crochet stitches. If you prefer half double crochet stitch boxes, you can do that too. But I'm going to be showing you how to do it with double crochet boxes. For our very first box, we're going to start with a chain 6 to chain. We're going to yarn over our hook, pull through the loop that's on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop. That's three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. We don't count this loop that's on our hook, so there's one, two, three, four. We yarn over our hook, we insert it into the center of that chain, 
yarn over, pull through, we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. These chains that we skipped in the beginning, those are going to count as one double crochet from our box. So technically now we have two double crochets. We're going to double crochet into the next two stitches, yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, right into the center, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. One more double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the center of the chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Our box consists of four double crochets. That's the skipped chains that we have and three double crochets. Now we're going to work row two, which is going to increase in size, and we're going to end up with two boxes. As we increase, we're going to start with a chain six. So we'll go ahead and do that now, chain six. And then we're going to work into this chain the same exact way that we worked our first box. We're going to count over four chains, one, two, three, four, double crochet into that chain, and then double crochet into each of the next two chains. Now we have this alligator mouth shape. We're going to take that bottom box and we're going to flip it so that it's mirrored. We're going to go to the top of the last stitch, which is the fourth stitch. So if you need to count over, you count one, two, three, four. It's also the same stitch that if you went like this and you closed it, it's the, the one that's the most natural. It's the same height. We're going to insert our hook into the center of that stitch. You'll be picking up the back loop and the top leg. So two loops on your hook right now. Yarn over, pull through that stitch and through the loop that's on your hook. That is a slip stitch join and we're going to be slip stitch joining each box to the next. In the beginning as we're increasing we work a chain six. In the middle we just start with a chain two and the chain two also counts as a double crochet. So Here's a chain two. We're going to work two of our double crochets into the space that's in between the last two stitches from that previous rows box. So yarn over, insert your hook right into that space, and as you do that, you're picking up this stitch on your hook. Yarn over, pull through. We have the same three loops on our hook and we're going to complete this double crochet. Then we'll work one more stitch into that same space, working over that stitch from the previous box. So now we have one, two, three double crochets and we need one more. And when I work them in the center, which you'll see in rows three and above, I will work a chain two and three double crochets into this space. When we work it on the edge, I work the chain two, two double crochets into that space, one double crochet into that foundation chain on the left side. And that's going to help give me an even edge. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook right into that foundation chain, and complete my double crochet. I only do this when I'm working the last box of the row so that it helps give me a clean edge. And now row two is complete with two boxes. And the way that I look at this, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. The beginning tail end is down here on the bottom right side. This is how I compare it to the chart where this number two is on the chart, that is this row that we just finished working. 
So here's row one and here's row two. For row three, we're going to chain six because we are increasing here. And then we're going to work down this chain the same way as we've done previously. Double crochet into the fourth chain and into the fifth and sixth chains as well. Now we have that alligator mouth shape. We're going to flip the bottom piece so it's mirrored. Find the top corner and we're going to insert our hook into that stitch which is also the fourth stitch of that previous box. Yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop that's on our hook. And now we've just completed a slip stitch there. As I work the boxes in the middle I find that this fabric gets in the way, so I'm just going to tuck it down as I work this middle box. Here we're going to start with a chain 2, and we're going to work our 3 double crochets into that space that's there in between the last 2 stitches of that previous box. So when we insert into that space, we pick up that last stitch on our hook and we just crochet over it. And this is how we work all the boxes in the middle, chain two, three double crochets into that space in between those stitches. Then I'll bring this up and I'm going to slip stitch to the top corner. And since this last box here is on the edge, I'm going to start with a chain two. Then I'll work two double crochets into that space in between those stitches. And I'll work my very last double crochet into that foundation chain on the edge. And now row three is complete with three boxes. For row four, we're going to start with a chain six. Then we'll double crochet down the chain, creating a box. Flip that bottom piece, slip stitch joint to the top stitch, and now I'm going to fold that fabric on the left down so it doesn't get in my way, chain two, work three double crochets into that space in between those stitches in that previous box. Then I'll bring my fabric up here, slip stitch join to the top of the next box. Fold that left piece down, chain two. Three double crochets into that space in between the stitches from that previous box. Then I'll fold that back up, slip stitch join to the top corner and work my last box. That's a chain two, two double crochets into that space, one double crochet into the foundation chain on the edge. And row four is complete with four boxes. Row five is going to be worked exactly the same way as row four, and we're going to finish with five boxes.
There's the end of row 5, and we have 5 boxes. Row 6 is where we're going to introduce our second color. In this case, mine is going to be soft white. For row 6, we're going to work one brown box, four white boxes, and one brown box. I'm going to start with my chain 6. and work my first box as normal. Now I'm going to slip stitch as normal. And here's where I'm going to join my new color. Before we do that though, I want to look at the first and second row. We're on row 6 right now, and row 6 is going to be the right side. That means that this is going to be the side of the fabric that is facing us. So we want all our tail ends to be on the back side. I'm going to grab my white tail. I'm going to make a loop. And I want to leave a tail end long enough to sew in later when I weave in my ends. Then I'll put that loop on my hook and I'm going to pull it through the loop that's on there right now. Then I'm going to pull on this brown yarn to tighten that loop down and it's going to disappear. Then I'm going to drop all my tail ends except the white yarn I'm going to be working with. I'm going to drop those other two to the back. And the reason I join my yarn this way is because this is the way that I think is the most seamless color transition. It's my favorite way to do it in corner to corner boxes. If you have a different way of joining that you prefer, go ahead and do that. But this is how you will see me doing all of my color changes. And you're also going to see me pulling yarn, the yarn tail ends down. Because the loop that I pulled down is not secured yet. So it's still going to pop up sometimes, especially as I'm working, until I secure it by working a, another box with it. So you're going to see me tugging on it. And then remember that I'm using my I9 hook for my brown yarn and my H hook for my white yarn. So you're going to start seeing me switching my hooks out as I work. Now I'm ready to work four white boxes. Here you can see I've worked my four white boxes. Now I'm going to work one brown box. So I, first thing I'm going to do, insert my hook into the next stitch and slip stitch as normal. And then I'm going to put this down. I have one brown tail end coming from the right side. And I need that tail end there. I'm not going to, to try to use this because I'm going to use this as I continue over here on the right side. So I'm going to introduce another strand here. You can do that from another ball of yarn to keep it a little bit easier to manage and untangle. But what I'm going to do is use the other side of my ball of yarn. And I'm just going to make a loop, leave a tail end that I'm going to weave in, put that loop on my hook and pull it through. Then tighten the white and switch hooks. And I drop to the white and the brown tail ends to the back. That's where I want all of my ends to be. Chain two and complete my last box.
And there's row 6, one brown box, four white boxes, and one brown box. For row 7, we're going to have one brown box, five white boxes, and one brown box. In this row, I'm going to go over the two color changes that we have. There are two types. There is one where we pull up, and there's one where we pull over. So I'm going to go over both of those with you right now. For the one where we pull the yarn over, I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch and slip stitch as normal. Then I'm going to drop that brown yarn here to the front. I'm going to pick up that new color, which in this case is white, and I'm going to pull it over. So I'm just bringing it around my hook. So I'm just yarning over my hook and pulling it through the loop. And I don't want to pull too tight or I'll bunch up my fabric, just a natural pull. And then I'm going to tighten my brown yarn. I'm going to switch hooks and I'm ready to work my next box. And when I insert my hook into that space, I'm picking up that, that float that I just created. And I'm gonna work over it, which will cover it up so you won't even see that it's there. Then I'm gonna continue working until I have five boxes. There I have five white boxes. Now we're at the next color change, which is when I'm pulling up. I'm going to keep the yarn, the white yarn in my hand as I'm going to work with it. When we were down here, we inserted our hook first, completed the slip stitch, then pulled the strand over. When we pull it up, we move the strand first, so I'm going to bring it up to the where the stitch I'm about to slip stitch in is. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch and when I do it's going to come out to the left of that strand I just pulled up. There's the strand I just pulled up and looking at it from the top you're going to see that my hook is inserted into that stitch. I have that tail end I just pulled up over my hook and then the white loop. Now I'm going to complete my slip stitch with the white. Then I'm in the perfect position to drop the white, pull up the brown, yarn over and pull it through. Then I'll just tighten down the white, bring the white to the front side where all the rest of the ends are, and I'll switch my hook back and now I'm ready to finish my last box. So when we pull it over, we insert our hook first, complete the slip stitch, then pull the yarn over and through the loop on the hook. When we pull it up, we pull the strand up first, insert your hook into the stitch, just to the left of the strand and complete the slip stitch then pull it through. 
We do end up with a float here on the wrong side. This is what a float is right here. Just a strand of yarn that is pulled upwards on the back side. But I prefer this way because it doesn't show through to the right side. The white, you can see it a little bit more now because it's loose, but if I tightened it up, you wouldn't really notice it. That's why I change colors in this manner. And that's how you're going to see me changing the whole way through. Row 7 is complete with one brown box, five white boxes, and one brown box. Row 8 is going to be one brown box, six white boxes, and one brown box. And now row 8 is finished. We had one brown box, six white boxes, and one brown box. For row 9, we're going to have one brown box, seven white boxes, and one brown box. And there's row 9. We had one brown box, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white boxes, and one brown box. Row 10 is going to be one brown box, eight white boxes, and one brown box.
And now row 10 is done with one brown box, eight white boxes, and one brown box. Row 11 is going to be one brown square, four white squares, two brown squares, three white squares, and one brown square. So we're going to need to introduce a brown strand right around here, as well as another white strand right around here. And I'll show you how I do that when I get there. I'm going to start off with my one brown and four white squares. Alright, I worked one brown square and four white squares. I'm going to slip stitch as normal here, and then I'm going to put this down. I have one brown tail up here on the top, and one brown tail down here on the bottom. And I'm going to need both of those to continue with as I move forward on these two lines. But since I need to introduce another one here, you can either do that by adding a strand from a new ball of yarn, or you can do just as I'm about to do. I'm going to find the one that's connected to the center of the ball, as that's the easiest one to work with. And I believe that's this one up here. So I'm just going to pull a long strand of yarn here that I'll continue to work with. And when I run out, I'll add more on later. and then I'll cut it here. And now this is the strand that I will continue with here and now I have a new strand from the center of my ball that I'm going to attach here in the middle. So I'll just create my loop, leave a tail to weave in, put it on my hook and pull through. Now I'll work two boxes. Then I'll slip stitch as normal here. Oops. And now I need to add a white. I only have one white attached down here, so I'm just going to pull the white tail from the other side of the ball. But you could add another strand here from another ball of yarn. It's a little bit easier if you work with different balls. So it's much easier to untangle. And now I'm going to continue by working three white boxes and one brown box.
in there is row 11. We had one brown box, four white boxes, two brown boxes, three white boxes, and one brown box. And if we flip this around here, you're going to see that this is the bottom right side of that letter O. For row 12, we're going to have one brown box, three white boxes, three brown boxes, four white boxes, and one brown box.
And there's row 12. We had one brown box, three white boxes, three brown boxes, four white boxes, and one brown box. For row 13, we're going to have two brown boxes, three white boxes, four brown boxes, three white boxes, and one brown box.
And there's row 13. We started with two brown boxes, three white boxes, four brown boxes, three white boxes, and one brown box.